Hey Brent, Central Virginia, 2018 springtime. Hey, what we're going to talk about today is shad. Now I'm talking specifically about the hickory shad, which you can keep. Um, you just got to make sure his bottom lip comes up past his top lip and you're okay. A lot of folks keep them for bait. They're great bait for catfish, stripers. Um, I don't really care for the flesh too much. It's a little mealy, a little bony, but I do like catfish and rockfish. Um, and also the roe. If you catch a female with a belly, uh, belly full of roe, you can wrap that in bacon, fry it in a pan. It's delicious. Anyway, we're not really going to talk much about the prep today, but what we are going to talk about are some baits, weights, line, and storage. So we're going to hit those four things kind of quick. Try to keep it. Try to keep it short. Uh, baits. Two basic categories. You got your grubs and darts. Kind of, kind of lump them into the same thing, and then then spoons. So. You know, this is your classic shad dart looking, looking bait right there. And then your, you know, your classic shad spoon is going to be something that looks like that. Something like that. Now, lots of different colors, lots of different options. Not so many sizes. You know, you might have uh, three, four sizes of, of darts and, and spoons, and, and that's about it. And, and really, the, the middle of the line uh, tends to work just fine. Whether you decide to try just a dart rig on its own, or a spoon on its own, or a double rig. If you ask for a shad rig, you go in somewhere, you're going to get some form of, of dart and some form of spoon. And they're going to be tied together. And they work really well. I'll, I tie my own, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I tie my own. I use, I use a heavy line. I use like a 15 pound, some type of super tough, maybe even up to a 20 pound test. And what that does is when that line, it tends to tangle less because it's stiffer. When it does get tangled, it's a bigger line so it doesn't bite down quite as hard. It's a little easier to get untangled. It doesn't weaken when it gets a knot in it as, as much as a smaller line does. And lastly, I use loop knots. Being as I use loop knots, that extra strength of that line gives me a little bit of extra insurance because loop knots typically aren't as strong as a, as a regular like a polymer for example. So that's my line selection. My knots, uh, I'll use a McNally loop for my dart. Uh, and you can look those up online and the McNally loop is really easy to tie. And then for my spoon, I'll use, uh, I'll use a Cray loop knot. Now Lefty Cray just passed away uh, a month or so ago, what an ambassador for the for the sport of fishing, especially if you're a fly fisherman. Now, I'll just briefly, his knot is a it's a loop knot tied about six inches from the from the end. So what you're left with is a tag. You run the the tag through the lure and back through the the overhand knot that you made. Wrap four times, not five, not three. Four has been my sweet spot. And then run that tag back through the loop that you made and gently snug that up. It makes for a really clean knot. The tag, what you end up clipping off, ends up pointing back behind the lure so it's not sticking up forward, catching uh, grass and debris as it goes through the water. Um, and you can clip it pretty close after you snug it down, kind of like a canoeman's loop, and that way the tag points back. But that's those are the knots I like to use. That's the line test I like to use. Uh, the weights I like to use. Um, quarter ounce is my sweet spot. Now these are little inline weights. And you can see, hold it against my, you can see that the end of them has got that little swivel. They're easier to tie. They, you know, they, if you like egg sinkers or you like the little rubber, uh, you like split shot, hey, rock on. This is, this is all, you know, it's all preference. This is the half ounce. Now I paint my sinkers too. You'll notice I paint them. Um, this one I painted to kind of try to just mimic the color of the water. The quarter ounce, just the, the color of the river bottom. I figure if a fish sees that, he's just going to think it's a leaf or something because I want him to be paying attention to those lures. If the water's dirty, you know, I'll go with something with the chartreuse, uh, you know, the chartreuse. But if it's clear, you know, I'll stay with the silvers, the whites, uh, the golds, and even the pinks. You know, that's, that's pseudo-natural but they tend to like those colors pretty well. Once you find the, the, the depth of water and, and everything, you know, that's when you really want to get dialed in. You can, you know, sometimes this half ounce is, is what you need. Uh, I enjoy 
the, the quarter ounce more because I can use a smaller rod. And these fish fight, man. They pull drag. They jump two foot up in the air. They, man, they, they're, we call them a, one of the nicknames is a poor man's talking. And they do not disappoint when they are, when they're making their run. They're anadromous, which means they come up in the freshwater to spawn. And I don't know whether they're eating because they're hungry or they're eating because they're mad. I don't care. They fight good. And that's what I'm looking for. So we've talked about lure selection. We've talked about line selection, weights. Um, so the last thing I like to have some rigs pre-tied when I go out. Uh, so this is kind of, this is my solution. I got a piece of PVC with a bunch of holes. Uh, and when I tie a rig, this is, this is the end that goes like in my pocket. And what I'll do is I'll take the, the dart and I'll hang it on this end first and I'll see, you know, if, if the hook of the thing comes down to here, then I'll undo the dart, I'll hook it into this hole, and then I'll stretch it just a little bit. You know, I, I don't want to put too much tension on it because that's that's not good for your knots or your lines or anything. And also you can, you know, you could even, you know, ding your, ding your tip of your hook up. Uh, but this way I can take some, I mean, I can change colors of rigs just like that. Uh, it works just fine for me. Anyway, I'm Brent, 2018 Central Virginia, We're talking about shad fishing. If you got any questions, post them up. Anyway, good luck to you. God bless.